you are taking over Starbucks as CEO at such an interesting moment in time. There's a digital disruption, there's a retail disruption uh, going across the industry. And in fact, you said that retail is going through a massive disruption. What is that disruption? And, and how is Starbucks navigating it? Yeah, I think, you know, first of all, if you look at, at sort of uh, what's happening in the entire retail sector today, is this shift of consumer behavior to doing more and more purchases uh, online. And that's just accelerated with the, with the advance of mobile, the mobile internet, mobile devices. And so as a result, especially in the US, uh, the, the United States is over-retailed. There, there are more brick and mortar retail outlets than can be supported in, in, this, in this disruption. And so, you know, you ask yourself, why is it in a period where there are more brick and mortar retail closures than any other time in history, is it that Starbucks continues to be able to build 2,000 new stores a year globally, and those stores continue to operate at some of the highest uh, revenues that, that, that we've had versus prior generations? And I think this disruption just highlights that, uh, two things that we think are, are important for all retailers to consider. One is you must be focused on experiential retail that creates an experience in your store, brick and mortar store, that becomes a destination for the customer. Number two, you've got to extend that experience from brick and mortar to a digital mobile relationship. And so, you know, our approach to this is we are investing in elevating the experience that we create in our stores, uh, and we are investing in the digital mobile connection we have with our customers. And we think at the end of the day that that will serve us very well. I want to introduce you to this gentleman. This is far from Shanghai. This is in Ballard, Washington, at my neighborhood Starbucks. Perfect. This gentleman's name is Gary Howlett. Uh, I found him uh, in the corner of my Starbucks. He is the ultimate Starbucks geek. He is a gold Starbucks rewards member. And here's the interesting thing about Gary. He travels to Vietnam four months out of the year to train teachers. And he goes to the Starbucks there as well. I asked him what I should ask you. He wants to know how do you globalize the culture? How do you create a consistent experience while staying true to the local culture because the baristas he interacts with in both countries take a very similar approach in a lot of ways, even though they're there, there for different reasons. Some of them are you know, just in college moving up in the United States perhaps, and some of them are in a career in Vietnam. Can you tell me sort of how you address uh, Gary's questions about globalization? Well, it's a great question. With over 330,000 partners around the world that proudly wear the green apron, how, how, how do we create that? And, and the answer is, is really uh, fairly simple. Our mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. So the core ingredient in what we create in our stores is number one, we build a beautiful store that creates a warm, welcoming environment. Number two, we provide the world's finest, most unique coffees and a coffee experience, but the most important ingredient is human connection. It's the baristas that learn Gary, learn your name, they know your favorite beverage, they, they welcome you when you come into our stores, and they are there to build you a handcrafted beverage to your preferences. And at the end of the day, it's about human connection. And you think about the one thing that every single one of us on this planet has in common. And I, I travel the world and I do round tables with our partners in the stores, I would, you know, in Mexico, in Europe, in China, in Japan, in the US, and everywhere I go, and I sit down and hear the stories of these people. They share their life journey. And the one thing we all have in common is the human experience. We've all experienced joy and sorrow. We've all experienced the, the, the struggle and the success. And so just anchoring on the fact that human beings, we're, we, are meant, we are tribal people. We get energy from one another. And if you create an environment where people are connecting with other people in our stores, it works everywhere. Yeah, you talked about those need states when we met. You've got the convenience and then the connection. Right. Those are the two need states that you're solving for. And so one is the connection through things like the roastery, the other is convenience here. Well, roastery and, and uh, you know, in our 27,000 Starbucks stores, you know, many customers go there. 
they go there with their family, with their friends, with their colleagues, and, and they go there to, to have a conversation over coffee. Uh, sometimes they go there just to ha have a connection with, with the baristas in the store. So this neat state of connection is something that I think is a special attribute of Starbucks. You know, in China, for example, in the United States, the peak is in the morning. It's usually between 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning. That's the peak part of our day. In China, it's 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And in China, it's after lunch, and it is a, it's the need state of connection. It's customers that come in, and they want to they buy a coffee or tea, beverage, and maybe a, a bakery item, and they sit down, and they want to have a conversation. And so that need state of connection is an important part of what we do. It strikes me that in a lot of ways, you and Amazon are going to the same place from different directions. Amazon is a traditional digital retailer. Uh, which is obviously rolling out a, a large number of physical retail stores. You're a traditional physical retailer that's getting more into digital. Do you watch what Amazon does? And, and, and to what extent do you think you could adopt things that they're testing or learn from what they're doing? Well, certainly we watch Amazon. We watch everyone in the industry. I think um, you know, in, in watching Amazon and others, it reinforces this, this principle of the combination of, an ex of a retail experience that involves a brick and mortar store combined with a digital mobile connection is, is the ingredient for the future. And so uh, some, like Amazon, started on the technology side, the digital mobile connection, and now they're moving into exploring more around brick and mortar. Starbucks, we started around the brick and mortar, and we're moving more towards digital. And, uh, and I think you see that with you know, most every major retailer, certainly in food and beverage, but I think you also see it in, in uh, mass merchants and apparel and other, other scenarios as well. It's interesting because Amazon is conducting one of, one of its experiments literally in your parking lot at the Starbucks headquarters in Soto here in Seattle. Their Amazon Fresh Pickup, one of their two locations, is right in front of you. It makes it easier to watch them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not hiding. Could you envision a day when you and Amazon are tighter partners and, and work together? Well, sure. I mean, we, uh, you know, we, we work to sell some of our products on Amazon, and you know, we have dialogue with them. And so uh, you know, we, you know, we look to partnerships with a number of you know, wide range of com companies. You know, we've got a partnership with Spotify on music, a partnership with Lyft on some things that we've done with them. And so, you know, I would say we are, we v we're very uh, open to, to the partnerships that, that create synergies. I got three words for you, Kevin. Drone delivered coffee. No, I guess I take it that's well, no comment. No, no, I mean, you know, look, all, you know, delivery, uh, look, we did a delivery pilot in the right, U.S. Right, with Postmates. We did a delivery pilot in the U.S. with Postmates. Yes. And uh, what we found was uh, the fee for the Postmates delivery was roughly $5. And our average ticket is roughly $5.50. So, you know, customers spending 5 or $6 uh, were reluctant to pay a $5 delivery fee. So, you know, the, the key on delivery of food and beverage is once you get up around a $30 ticket, then that delivery fee will make sense. Now, you say, oh, well, with drones, maybe the cost goes down. That's probably, that's probably true. There may be some FAA things that have to be figured out. But, uh, you know, I think delivery is, is a part of the scenario. And, uh, you know, and I think there's a wide range of uh, technologies and things, drones included. Are you working on your own drones, or are you going to work with Amazon on that? We're not working on our own drones. Okay, we, right. We've got other priorities to do got right it. now. That would be something we'd look to, uh, you know, to partners who are, who are much more drone literate than we are. Got it. Well, we've got Jeff Wilkie coming up later today, so Perfect. I'll see if I can make that connection for you. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Doc. Okay. Um, so on the theme of technology, you actually are using virtual reality in some interesting ways. And we have a video of essentially the transition from a CAD store design to virtual reality. And we're going to go ahead and play that now, and then we can just sort of explain what's happening here. Can you narrate this video for folks? Yeah, what, what you're seeing is uh, the rendering of a new store design. You know, we, we design every single store around the world as a snowflake. No single store is the same. And so we have a team of store designers that sit and they, they draw the stores, they, they do the CAD drawings, they design everything. They design the furnishing, they curate the artwork, they design uh, the layout of the stores, the bars, the lighting. 
And uh, just in this last year, our Starbucks technology team has worked with store development so that they can take that CAD drawing and with the click of a mouse, translate it into a virtual reality environment, uh, skin that environment. And so we have designers now can walk a store and see what it's gonna look like before we start deploying capital to actually build it. And so what you're seeing is a rendering of a store uh, that was designed uh, by our store design team. And so this has become a tool that they use to give, to give them much more of a visual. Before we had this, they used to go into a, a floor in our building and actually put tape around sort of the, the, the layout of what the store was gonna be so that they could get sort of a visual perspective. Now they can do it through virtual reality. So that's one example of how we're using technology internally to help facilitate uh, store design.